Bishop. Any action can take time. Right, any question mm -hmm. from previous? Less. No. Hydrostatics. Second part. Where is the chatting already? Uh, he cannot hear my voice. He was saying, in Chinese. Can you hear it now? Okay, good. All right, it's working. So hydrostatics. So meta center, uh, meta center is related to the stability. So we already see this one before for the discussion session. Right? Center of gravity, center of gravity is G. G. We usually, usually higher than uh, buoyancy center D. Because buoyancy center is just center of submerged volume, submerged part. Only below part or center of this submerged portion of volume. But it is not rectangular, it is at the toward the end of the shape. It's very narrow, right? Yeah. So in the middle, it looks like a rectangle. Anyway, the Boyan center, there is a center of uh, force coming from the water for the ship. The buoyancy force and gravity force is a balance any time. So G is a center of a whole ship. Whole ship means a lightweight and also cargo weight. But ship also have a, say something like a container ship. They store containers on deck higher. So that, and also superstructure is there. So usually the center of gravity is higher than the When ship is moving, moving, heaving, heaving, or pitching, still you need to know that there is a balance between forces, buoyancy and also gravity. But center of gravity is usually stay there. Usually does not move when ship is moving. Still center of gravity is same there. But buoyancy center is moving. Right? When healing, so much volume is changing. Right? Something like this one, right? When rolling is done, so much volume has different shape. Right? So the VRC center is moving for this right hand side, for the right hand building. Then we can calculate M. M. By this is a also balancing there at this moment, balancing. Right. So center of buoyancy, center of gravity, and this is a, a center line, just center line. So when the buoyancy force line meets the center line, we call this is a mass M. So M is also moving, right? Because she is moving. G is usually not moving. Sometimes it is a small moving. Because one of person passenger is moving toward the other end to see a nice view. But it is very small, okay, small okay. 100 kilo, kilogram. So it is a 10,000 ton. So it's not affecting the change of G. We is negligible movement, but this one is moving. Right. So Angle of here, the center of VLC move. But the meta center is important for stability. In this case, in this case, 
the buoyancy force trying to uh, uh, rotate the ship for the unlike right position. Right? This way. The other way is moving in this way, then here. Yeah. So ship is moving in this way, but trying to stabilize for the upright position. Same as this one. Same as Lollipop, eh? Rolling. Rolling. But when time go on, the state still. Ship is also the same. But there is more uh, tons of forces are acting. So we call this rolling. So meta center, center of weight. Is higher, the CD it is higher than center of support. This rocking chair is the same. See that? It's a floor. CG. CG is changing if you are sitting on the chair. The person is on the chair, uh, then CG is moving, right? CG is moving. Whether there is a person or not. But anyway. If you are looking, looking or rolling the chair, then the CG is, does not move, but the support point is, center of support is moving. That's why they make a moment. So the support moves and so keep the chair from tipping over. Table vessel, same. Here, we have buoyancy supports, line. Will intersect with the ship center line that we call this at the center. So, meta center height between the center of gravity and M. So, we have the center ship moved, so we can find the M, but G is still there. This is G. So GM, GM is the important parameter for the stability. Actually, the GG, GG is the most important. That is a writing moment arm, moment arm for upwriting the ship. But this point is still, Z point is still moving. So that GM is usually used for calculation. Yes, sir. Do you understand this one? So GM is typically used for the parameter for uh, estimating the stability is found when the position of the center above the present If GM is positive, we call this is a stable negative and stable. If we call this one in this way, unstable. Right? We call this the negative. GM essentially constant for small angle. Small angle means say five degree, less than five degree. We can assume that this constant. So anyway, GG is the most important uh, writing up, calculated by GM. Angle here, that, that is the uh, physical uh, writing moment arm. But in shape, we usually see a uh, GM. Here is the video.클래스에 가서 강사한테 열심히 듣고 집에 와서 독서실에 가 가지고 열심히 공부하고 이런 식으로 해서 메타 센터 when a solid body floating in a fluid is tilted from its equilibrium position then the stability of its equilibrium depends upon the location of its meta center to understand this let us recall that a solid body floats in a fluid
if the mass density of a body is less than that of fluid, as in case of wood, plastic, ice cube, etc. And if the weight of fluid displaced by the immersed body is equal to the weight of the body, as in case of boat, ship, etc. When a body, say a ship, floats in water, it is acted upon by two forces. A vertical downward force of gravity, which is equivalent to the weight of the body, W, acting at the center of gravity, G. And an upward vertical buoyancy force, FB, which is equal to the weight of the water displaced by the immersed body which passes through the centroid of the displaced volume of water, that is, the center of buoyancy. Now, for a floating body to be in equilibrium, the buoyancy force should be equal to the weight of the body. Also, the center of gravity and the center of buoyancy should lie on the same vertical line, called the center line, BG. Now, if a body undergoes an angular displacement, say in the rightward direction, then we see that the volume displaced is larger in the right side. Thus the center of buoyancy shifts towards the right from B to B dash. And a couple is formed which tries to rotate the body. Here the point of intersection of the vertical line through the new center of buoyancy B dash and the center line BG is termed as the meta center of the body and the distance by which the metacenter lies above the center of gravity of a floating body is known as the metacentric height, GM, which is given by Depending upon the location of the metacenter, a floating body possesses three types of equilibrium. They are stable, unstable, and neutral equilibrium. When M is above G, Then, in this case, a restoring couple is formed by the buoyancy force and the weight of the body, which tends to turn the body to its original position. Thus, the body is said to be in stable equilibrium. Now, when M is below G, then, in this case, an overturning couple is formed by the buoyancy force and the weight of the body, which tends to sink the body from its original position. Thus, the body is said to be in unstable equilibrium. And when M coincides with G, then in this case, the line of action of buoyancy force and the weight of the body are collinear and passes through the same point. Due to this, the body neither returns to its original position nor increases its displacement further. Thus, the body is said to be in neutral equilibrium. Right? Question? No? Right. So how to compute? Because the ship is not ready yet. It is only on your concept as a designer. Right? Only appear in the, in the drawing. Also, probably sometimes on the computer. Then how do you estimate the, whether the ship is stable enough or not stable? You should know about this. And if it is not, then you need to modify the design to make the ship more stable. Right? That's why you need to help know how to compute the GM. The GM is equation, but something like this one, KB, KB is here, KB, K is here. That is static point. Center of uh, bottom line. G is almost uh, stable, not moving. Changing point is G. KB, but KB is uh, also given at the stable position, upright position. Uh, the, usually, this is about uh, half of the direct line, half of the direct line. This is T. Yeah. And BM is a little bit complicated. The volume, also I, the moment of inertia of the water plane area, water plane area, 
you know, you know what the plan area is looks like this one. You know, you know the how to take the moment finish shot. You know from the physics class moment finish. And volume of the displacement. This is volume under under what volume? You can calculate. And then kg kg is stable. That move. So BM is requires some uh, calculation. So computer helps you to calculate this. One. Otherwise, it takes time. KD also takes time. You need to calculate uh, volume center. Right. For existing ship, ship is already built. Or ship is uh, purchased when after 10 years of operation. Sevoro was the case. The, the, the shipping company buy the Sevoro after 20 years of operation in Japan. So it was an old ship. But he, after purchase, they modified it. And then operate. Okay. So it is just ship. Also, every new ship, new ship, the shipbuilding companies, just after construction of the ship, before delivery, it is a requirement, regulation, to check the center of gravity. Because before then, it is all calculation based on designers and shipbuilders. But we, we, are, we are not sure whether this is correct one. So, they want to have an experiment to, to calculate. This is we call the inclining experiment. The inclining experiment is done at least one time every ship at the uh, delivery of the ship. See the video then. <laughs> Hello, in this video we're going to be exploring the inclining experiment. So the inclining experiment is uh, typically done to measure the, determine the kg of the vessel. Uh, it can be done for the light ship of a vessel, um, typically it's done for the light ship uh, after a new build or after uh, some kind of modification in a, in a maintenance or yard period. Uh, the basic idea here is that you uh, have a known weight. You might load it up on the center line. And on the ship, you will hang a pendulum. And you'll know exactly how long that pendulum is. And down in the bottom of the ship, you're going to set up, you know, a, a kind of a wooden batten down there. Where, okay. Uh, and that pendulum will have a plum weight on it. And then what you'll do is you'll take that weight. Okay. You'll know what the weight is. And you'll slide it a known distance to port or starboard. In this case, if you're looking at it from a stern, the weight was... Sl uh, they slid the weight a known distance, okay, from uh, center line to starboard. And what happens then is that that pendulum is deflected, okay, it's deflected a certain distance, and you can actually measure it on the batten. Uh, you can draw a line there. So you have a line drawn for the center line, and then you have a line drawn after you've inclined it with a known weight and known distance off the center line. And now you have a deflection, and there's a ratio of the length of that pendulum and the deflection and that we can relate that to this angle theta which would be the angle of list created by that off-center weight. So let's look at this a little bit more carefully now. So in this picture here this is our vessel we're looking at it from stern here's our known weight we're going to end up sliding it in known distance here to starboard. This line here is our pendulum and our pendulum is actually lined up on the center line and here's our batten. So as I slide this weight to starboard, okay, oh, by the way, we know the length of this pendulum. We measure it very carefully before we start this. And we mark where the pendulum is on the batten before we shift the weight. So now we shift the weight to starboard. And in the process of doing that, okay, the, uh, uh, the pendulum will still be uh, uh, vertical, but since the vessel is inclined, Okay, we'll, be, we'll have this deflection here from where it was on the center line before inclination to where it is now after we inclined it. And so we have a ratio of this distance versus this distance. We can measure those carefully. Okay, so batten deflection, 
uh, length of the pendulum. Well, this angle theta can now be related through uh, the uh, the tangent of the theta. So tangent of the, uh, tangent of an angle is opposite over adjacent. Okay. So here's our hypotenuse. Here's our opposite. If this is our angle, this is the leg opposite, the side opposite. This is the side adjacent. So we can say that tan theta equals opposite over adjacent. And now we can name that opposite. That opposite is the deflection along the batten, uh, and the adjacent is the length of the pendulum. Okay, so now this is the, um, the, the same image, okay? Uh, and what I've done here is just recreating the, the, the previous slide. Tan theta is opposite over adjacent, which is deflection over pendulum, okay? So now <clears throat> we can look at this another way. We could look at it from this perspective. I had a vessel, and it originally had a, a G here. Okay, here's the keel. That's our KG. And the weight was on the center line. As soon as I shifted that weight, okay, from the center line to so, some known distance to starboard, G will shift as well. And G will shift parallel to the shift of the weight. So you can see the G was here. I moved that weight out there, and that moved the weight off center, which is essentially what caused the vessel to incline. Okay, so G went from the center of gravity shifted from the center of gravity here, G, to the new center of gravity, G prime, and we call that uh, GG. Okay, well, so we can draw that down here too. Uh, so we have our metacenter, and we have the original center of gravity, and we have the new center of gravity caused by the shifting of this weight. Okay, and uh, so uh, we have G. So if GG is GM tan theta, and GG is weight times distance divided by displacement, then it makes sense that we could set these two equal to each other. Okay, so that's essentially what I've done. If I said that GG equals GG, I can just substitute these two in there, and now I have this super formula. And now, if I solve this for GM by dividing both sides by tan theta, I could also weight times distance divided by tan theta, or I could just substitute deflection over length in there for as well. And typically, this form, I'll use AM minus GM. So if I look up my KM based on my drafts, I can figure out my KG. So uh, the beauty of this formula is, is that we can also solve it for a weight. We can solve it for a distance. And we can solve it. Uh, we can determine angle. And uh, so uh, this formula here in these two, um, it's up to you what you want to do. Very important. We're going to be using this for to derive it for all these, um, but um, it's up to you what you want to do. Being a whole. So we can calculate or exper by experimenting uh, in planning this, we can calculate uh, by experiment, the kg. So usually it should be the same. The original kg estimated from the calculation computer coming from the experiment, inclined experiment, should be the same. But sometimes it is not. So we need to, sometimes you need to have more work. Another one is free surface moment. Something like that. One of person is moving from side by side. That makes the G change, small change. Right? Also, the inclined test, the W is moving. So the G is moving slightly. Same effect is coming from the liquid uh, water tank or liquid tank. If she is here, some portion of the liquid is moving same direction. So it's about this amount of uh, uh, weight is moving toward making more capsizing or healing side. So that effect is be reducing the metal cell size. So stability is not good. Actually, the real physics is a change of CG. Small question. If the water is completely filled, something like this one, and more, then there will be no, no free surface moment. Free surface moment. Now, See that this is the main result of calculation of uh, stability. This is uh, GG, GG, writing arm, 
o Amrite woman, TG, TG is here, TG, and TG, or zero. So we, by the hailing angle, hailing angle, about 40 degrees, the maximum TG, right to moment, for this shape. So for any shape, you need to calculate this curve to check the study. There is a regulation coming from uh, 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 Christian Society and also IMO. IMO is an international maritime organization. They set up a regulation for stability. There are many items. So one of them is ma mainly related to this. This one is the most important uh, criteria. The angle of here, uh, right moment, uh, curve, curve. Longitudinal static stability, this is for in this way, not, not side by side. This is up front and back. We call this is a, a, a trimming, trimming. So usually ship does not capsize in this way. Right? Cars are sometimes uh, capsized in this way. Automotive, automotive. So ship is long, so so it is not uh, important for ship case. Otherwise, very small ships. Small ship. yeah. Boat, small boat. Flooding and subdivision. This is coming from Titanic. Titanic. Have you seen the uh, film of Titanic? Yes, sir. Oh, yes. Yes. About half of you. So. They hit the ship, hit the uh, iceberg, right? And there is a crack at the bottom front part, crack. The water is incoming through the crack. That is a certain point. But for modern ships, it's okay. Because that, that portion of the crack side is limited. If full of that room is so. The window is broken, this room, water is incoming, but the room is filled with water, the door is well closed, still ship is okay. A little bit healing, small healing, but it's okay, can run. But at this time, even though this was a very new ship at the time, there was no regulation to protect such as a water type door or something. So water is increasing, increasing, popping over, popping over, popping over, and sinking down. That was the main reason for Titanic case. So that you you, you have a several hours or or I don't know, ten hours or eight hours because it is slowly sinking down. So that there were many stories, many stories, long time. Several or other ships, very fast. Very fast. That was not so long history. The story. So this is a damage of flooding and subdivision due to hull damage. We call this is damage stability. Before that, it was intact stability without damage. Without the so core, but still we need to stable the ship, even though there is a damage. So when there is a crack, the single compartment or room is filled with water, still the ship should be stable, safe. That is a regulation. So we call this is a floodable length, floodable length. How long should be the crack? How long? Floodable. It is it, for this ship. 10 meter crack is okay. We call this a flood of length. <clears throat> now, after Titanic uh, disaster, the IMO uh, create a safety regulation. That was the beginning. And they started to make a watertight bulkhead and watertight doors. All the re regulation or requirement. From that time, very much. Work it. Watertight work. 
one can one compartment standard. This is floatable compartment. One room is okay to float. Double damage. That is the one part. One part. Nowadays it is increasing. Two compartments can be should be okay now. That that is something like a wall, right? Work has is a wall. Submarine is a little bit different. Submarine is different. There is no water surface like this one. When submarine is above water, same as ship. The same as ship. But below water surface, there is no such a B changing, no changing, no up like uh, right hand, no up right hand. So when you somebody is hit by poking moment, you rotate. Very similar to space spaceship. Spaceship, you know that there is a, a no gravity motion in the spaceship. When there is a small hit, then it is rotating long time right? because there is no resistance. Same, similar, not, not same, but similar. Okay, there is a... We were looking at the differences between ships and submarines. Firstly, most obvious. Obviously, there are huge implications in terms of buoyancy and stability. With a ship, you just need to make sure the underwater part of your vessel displaces enough water to provide buoyancy to keep it afloat. Submarines, of course, are a little different. On the surface, just like a ship, the hull needs to displace enough water to provide positive buoyancy, but it also needs to be able to sink, so you need to be able to increase its displacement to make it weigh more than the water it displaces. It's actually quite simple. You just flood some ballast tanks, making the vessel heavier and less buoyant, basically so that it sinks. That's great for going down, but then when you're deep enough, you need to be neutrally buoyant instead. You want the submarine to weigh the same as the water it displaces, so that it neither floats nor sinks. Again, it's quite simple, you just pump out a little ballast water using compressed air from cylinders. Done precisely enough, you can make the submarine weigh the exact same as the water it displaces, making it neutrally buoyant. So that deals with the buoyancy, but what about stability? After all, a submarine still needs to remain upright when underwater. Remember how a ship uses form stability to stay upright? This just means that the shape, or form, of the hull provides a writing force whenever the ship leans over slightly. The underwater shape changes, shifting the centre of buoyancy, separating the force vectors, creating a moment to right the ship. This is how, counterintuitively, the centre of gravity can be above the centre of buoyancy. A submarine, however, can't do that. When it's fully submerged, its underwater shape remains constant no matter how far it leans over. Its centre of buoyancy doesn't move. Instead, you have to rely on keeping the centre of gravity below the centre of buoyancy. Your stability is provided by the force of gravity and the force of buoyancy pulling in opposite directions. Underwater, it's easy because you just make sure the heavy things are placed low down, but on the surface it can be a little harder. Think about it. As the hull emerges from the water, the centre of buoyancy drops lower down because it's just the centre of the underwater volume. If you let it drop too low, it might go below the centre of gravity and the submarine would just flop over. This is why submarines appear to float really low in the water. They need to keep the centre of buoyancy above the centre of gravity. So we've now dealt with buoyancy and stability, but what about navigation? We already said that on the surface, submarines can do the same as any other vessel. 
You can take bearings of navigational features like lights or headlands, you could use a radar to measure distances, or you can just use GPS to get an immediate satellite fix. As soon as you disappear below the surface, however, none of that is possible. Instead, you need to try and track your movements since your last known fix. The system that does this is known as an inertial navigation system. It uses a collection of accelerometers and gyroscopes to calculate the vessel's movements and keep track. Right. So the other thing is uh, related with uh, dynamics. You can see in the later stage. Right. Oh, that's the end of my. Right. Then we move on to the lecture today. Never.